everyone, this is Kalimara here, and no, it's not calamari. Welcome back to my channel, or if you're new to the pond, go ahead and take a dive. You might like it here. As you might have seen from the title of this video, we are once again talking about AI, but this time with insight straight from the source. An AI bro. So, how did I get myself tangled in this situation? Well, shortly after I posted my first AI video, I received a pretty long anonymous email from a self-proclaimed AI bro, and we ended up getting into a very insightful discussion about the AI bro perspective and mindset. And because I had to suffer through that, I figure you guys should too. Big shout out to my good friend Noble Lucy for reading the lines for the AI bro. Go check out his channel, he makes awesome commentary videos. But before we start this video, I do highly encourage you guys to watch my first video about AI to get the full context about my stance on AI art. It's not required though because this discussion ended up going on a completely different direction than what was discussed in my original video, so even if you hadn't watched it, you can still understand this one. But first, some disclaimers and trigger warnings. Obviously, this person doesn't represent the entire AI community and I sincerely hope their opinions are entirely their own and does not reflect the views of everyone in their community. And you'll understand why. Uh, trigger warning for mentions of CP. Yes, this person somehow brought CP into the discussion, so if that topic makes you uncomfortable, I suggest you click off now. But if you are still here, Let's get into those emails. Okay, so I'm going to be recording the lines that you gave me. Um, <laughs> yeah, I guess. Let's go. You should ask tech bros about AI. Your artist's thought bubble just keep echoing the same nonsense. Modern AI are actually neural networks. It was straight up copied from the animal brain. It's in the name. It was not a human invention. So you're telling me AI isn't like a human invention? Then how was it like created? I don't understand. Training is not jargon. It's exactly what is happening. It's learning like an animal slash human from examples. The training data set is the equivalent of a textbook or life experience. This is what contributes to build its brain. These are not reference images. Image prompts are reference images. The 5 billion no typo images of the Leon dataset was used to build a model AI brain of just 4 gigabytes. That's on average less than one text character per image. The gigantic difference is because it truly learns and understands from the examples. When it makes images, it only uses the 4 gigabyte model. It works fine without an internet connection. It's not capable of recreating the Leon dataset the same way you can't remember all the examples you learned on. The mangled hands is because hands are too difficult and it didn't understood how they work. It also can't write or count. What a smart machine that is. Explain differently your brain with a hundred billion neurons works like an AI. There's a reason why you have all those nutritionally expensive neurons. They are contributions from your life experiences, copyrighted or not. Pikachu, Homer Simpson, and stuff you don't explicitly remember anymore contribute to your art. Human brains never create anything new. They just randomly remix stuff they've seen. Yes, because that's called creativity. You can call it remixing or understanding slash creation. How you call it doesn't matter. In both cases, it's neural nets. And in both cases, they work the same, as you would logically expect. The AI is basically an artificial animal. Or animals are AI built by natural selection. The real shortcomings of AI are that its training is very inefficient and its brain is too small, warm, or insect. The result is AI that is stupid and dem- I'm glad they know. 
I'm glad they're very self-aware about that. In summary, AI and humans are doing the same thing. AI are basically alive. Human brains can only remix, not create something genuinely original either. The parts that you didn't understand about the technology is that it's the same technology that powers the human brain. Hey there, thanks for reaching out. I'm glad a tech bro contacted me because I have a few questions about AI and you're probably the best person to ask. You mentioned training datasets. What are these datasets? Where are they procured from? How are they different from reference images if you are equating them to textbooks or life experiences, which are used as references? And in most cases, references like textbooks when you're writing an essay must be cited or you'll be penalized for plagiarism. How is AI an exception to this? In my video, I have explicitly acknowledged that AI works are their own original piece of artwork because the AI transforms it. My argument was that the people who prompted the AI to create them are not artists. As you claim AI is an artificial animal, who underwent their own training to perfect their work, I would argue that they are the real artists of the piece. And so, do you think prompters should have copyright over the produced images? What is your opinion on the fact that AI works do not qualify for copyright and are free use? What is the general consensus in the AI community? What is the AI community's opinion on people who use artists' names as prompts to emulate their art style in the AI-generated image? Looking forward to hearing from you. From here onwards, I'm going to divide the video into sections dedicated to each question and the discussion surrounding it. Oh, oops, I wrote a book. Well, this is complicated. You don't have a good reference in your head about this. This is not a homogeneous view. Others will see it differently. I'm not a spokesperson. Yeah, you're too fucking dumb to be a spokesperson, dude. Seeing them as artificial animal is most compact explanation. Your questions don't really make sense. You're telling her that she doesn't make any sense. Bro, have you read what you've, what you've like, sent her? The training is what goes inside its head. You learn to speak from examples, your life experiences. You forgot almost everything you don't remember where you learned a certain particular word. You are not able to remember what you ate last week or what conversations made you learn a word 20 plus years ago. Long story short, a neural net, AI and animal, is a statistical machine. It extracts statistical information from the inputs and rejects almost all of the raw information. It learns from it. It doesn't memorize it. After training, it never uses them ever again. It retained understanding for them. The training dataset is billions of images they scraped from all over the internet. They felt confident in doing so because the way training works in human <laughs> sorry, this guy's fuck his sentences are all over the place. I'm so sorry. I'm having a hard time reading. In a human, the learning algorithms of the brain don't care about copyright either. All the statistical information is jumbled up together in one big mess. That is a technical trade-off. Neural nets are extremely efficient, but also an unreadable mess of complexity. When you say something, you are not capable in explaining what inputs influenced the use of the word or the particular local conclusion. Jesus Christ, dude, use small words next time. It's not possible to explain the decision of an AI either. This is one of the reasons some see AI as a potential threat. The complexity is so extreme even to their own creators don't understand why it does things. For example, GPT-3, that is a language model, accidentally learned addition and string inversion, and it does errors like a human, but they don't know how it's doing it. It's because of stuff like this that I'm saying that you can see them as artificial animals. GPT-3 behaved here more like a puppy or a toddler and less like a machine. Oh my god, there's still fucking more. Overfitting here corresponds to basically memories. 
You remember your parents' faces, but not exactly what you saw in order to memorize them. The AI is capable of remembering Obama's face, or Homer Simpson, or the famous Afghan girl image. Your brain remembers these by violating copyright because like AI, you saw them too many times. If asked, you could plagiarize them from memory. The AI too could plagiarize them if asked. Technically, it's doing what the user asked. The AI could also be able to plagiarize anything the user wants if it doesn't know it already. I've seen that now it's even possible to train an AI on a single image in order to learn something specific, character, style, object. The usual way an image is generated is by having the AI hallucinate the prompt out of a random noise. It's like you looking at a cloud, you trying to see a cat. You can also have it start from an image. That's the equivalent of a reference image. There are videos of people trying random prompts on images that are totally unrelated to the prompt with funny results. An AI is just not a tool. It's more like a dog. Its master can teach it tricks that you disapprove of, and anyone can have one. What the fuck is he talking about? Oh my god, he just keeps on going, bro. Holy shit. Thanks for getting back to me. I've got some more questions and clarifications to make. You didn't quite answer my question about where the data to train the AI is procured from. I don't think you can equate human consciousness with an AI's neural network because humans passively receive information from their environment, whereas AI, as you say, must be trained tricks like a dog by their master. That puts the responsibility on its master, its creator, to procure the data for them. And the issue at hand is that these creators may not have acquired the data lawfully, like stealing a book from the bookstore instead of paying for it. And even then, most humans still have to acknowledge and cite where they received their knowledge or inspiration from. Scholars cite all their claims with references and external sources, even if they remembered it off the top of their heads or they'll be committing plagiarism, which can cause them to lose their credentials and license. Artists cite their references and inspiration, or they'll be ostracized by the wider community. Therefore, if an AI functions so similarly to human consciousness, should it not have the same expectations? Yes, I did. They just scraped 5 billion images from the internet. They simply ignored copyright. They turned on the vacuum cleaner and sucked indiscriminately. But you already knew that. This is the source of all the drama. There's a learning algorithm that determines how to train a neural net in animals that comes from natural selection. In the AI's case, it was made by humans. The learning algorithm is very important, otherwise neural net turns into a garbage factory. Yes, uh, from all the examples that I've seen like all over the internet, like every time you put AI and you ask it to draw hands, like even the most simplest of hands, it fucks it up but like to a monstrous degree. And I love it. I love just looking up like AI hands. <laughs> My point was that the AI brain works like the animal brain. Like I tried to explain, because of how neural net works, you end up with an unreadable mess. All you see is a bunch of meaningless numbers. You can't tell what's the contribution of a training image in a generated image. Everything you ever did ultimately came from the examples you experienced. The human brain never generates anything truly new. It's always a remix of something. This is how neural net builds its intelligence. It's statistical information about the world. Statistics, by their nature, ignore almost all information. I'll say it one more time. The 5 billion images is the equivalent of all the information your brain used to learn to speak. You are not capable in determining what initial information made you learn what. This is not just that you forgot, it's also that the whole thing is a giant complex mess. The creators themselves of GPT-3 don't know how it learned to do addition. It's a technical trade-off. Neural nets are extremely efficient, but also unreadable. You can see a soul in there if you fancy. Citation is impossible. You may have its brain in a computer, 
it's still unreadable. The thing is violently non-linear. Hard to make, but once made, it's incredibly efficient. Even if your brain was a computer simulation with your entire life history recorded, we still would not be able to tell what exactly contributed to your behavior. All right, thank you for answering my question. Though there is a fundamental difference between a human brain and an AI neural network in that it's still a computer that runs off of codes and interacts with code. Everything online has metadata, even images, and an AI would have full access and capability of logging it. I don't think it's as nebulous as you make it out to be. How training works. You take an image, you add noise to it in steps to the point of bin complete noise. You use the appropriate pairs to teach the AI to denoise images in steps. You do this by presenting it in pair, then adjusting by a small increment the synaptic weight so that the error is lower. The important part to understand is that the increment is far less than what is needed to actually do the example correctly. Not only that, the weight can increase or decrease and the order of the example matters in chaotic ways. If you try to use it on the example you just trained it on, it will be barely better than before. You go through the 5 billion examples each time by a small insufficient increment. This is like a human trying to trace examples right after each attempt. Not much seems to change. The training very slowly accumulates over many examples. As you can see, asking what's the contribution of a training images is completely hopeless. The whole thing is thoroughly mixed together in chaotic fashion. It's a complete mess. Even the creators of these things can't answer. It's worse than asking to separate the eggs from baked cake because they are not non-linear interactions. For example, from what did it learn that faces have two eyes? Well, the first examples moved the relevant weights the most, but they were first out of pure luck. If you change the order, the new first examples will always move the weights the most. A ton of images contain the information for this. You can't just say it's just the first image. If it sees a lot of bad examples of something at first, then later examples would contribute more. And weights don't just go up, they can go down too. And this is a simple example. How do you even start categorizing all the other weird stuff it's doing? That its brain is in a computer and you have full access to it and you log everything doesn't help. So you are implying that AI is using its own generated images as a reference and the only reason it produced an image at all is sheer luck? But either way, you've already been able to identify what the actual problem addressed in my video was in your previous email. So I think it is sufficient information. I'll dump it down to the extreme. The AI are alive. What does the subject of this email says? If you did not get that, you didn't understand anything and you'll get exhausted fighting a windmill. On top of that, you don't understand the technology and how easy it is to use. You remember about GPT-3? It accidentally learned addition. It was supposed to only learn to speak, and they didn't know how it did it. It's not a database, it's a non-linear set of rules. It's a brain that's like the animal brain. This is how you think. This is how human becomes intelligent. The world is very complicated filled with exceptions. A neural net is a set of micro rules with all their extremely complex relationship. I think it's very scary that uh, a robot is able to just like learn and become more human. Like, am I just the only one that's like genuinely afraid of that? Like, do AI bros just not know? During learning, it learns a fragment about the world. Then it learns a new one. The new one partly overwrites the previous one. Later, it goes back and repairs it, but then the new one is a bit damaged. This back and forth builds the rules between the various concepts it learns. It's like weaving. This is why everything gets correlated with everything else in one big mess. If you change one thing, you have to readjust the rules for many other things. 
you could hear this guy, I guess. You could hear this guy, I guess. I don't agree with all that, but it's commonly held views. Beh, that's more of a philosophical than technical. Most don't care, I've seen comparisons to photography, current AI art is somewhere between photography and traditional art. You can do very complex things, play with the prompts, the random noises, use reference images, photo bashing, how much freedom it has keeps making variants of the best results, in painting, out painting, training, use multiple models, and of course, it will only get better over time. Stable diffusion fits in 4 gigabytes. Chat GPT needs 700 gigabytes of memory. So most don't care? You compare AI to photographers and photo bashers, but those people certainly want and own copyright over their work. How much control do you have over the produced artwork? Is it completely up to the AI? It can go from simple to complex. You can train your own. When I say that, I mean, I meme. I mean, you train a few things on top of the base model. You can make a crappy drawing in a few minutes and drop that in an AI as reference. It's not there yet, but if you want to do a movie on your own, you'll need the AI. Or it'll take you 30 years. Alright, thank you for answering my question. Le <laughs> legalize. The perspective is too American. Lol. Also, that's just a non-binding opinion of the Copyright Office. It's not a court. For most, the legal situation is unclear. I personally think copyright laws are disconnected from reality. What the fuck? And AI will put them out of their misery. Whatever the courts or politicians do, it will not matter. The contradiction become too apparent. In practice, a law must also be enforceable. Someone has to enforce it. I simply can't see how you can stop the pirates in practice. This thing is too addictive. I expect big media companies like Disney to get devastated. The smaller ones will die last. Oh my fucking god. Bro, bro, Disney is not gonna die first. Disney, the multi-billion dollar company, is not gonna die anytime soon. A long time ago, art was just art. Books were just books, and stories were just stories. Wow, who would have fucking thought? They didn't have an author, they just belonged to everyone, and people did whatever they pleased with them. Are you fucking kidding me? Are you telling me that back then Lord of the Rings didn't have a fucking author? You fucking idiot. I think this attitude will return. Evil Mouse can try all it wants to stop it, this time it will fail. I'm not American, FYI, and I don't think you understand the impact that court ruling has on AI as an industry. If AI is not copyrightable, then nobody can have exclusive ownership or protection over their AI-generated work. You would not be able to profit off of art generated from AI, so most companies, and it's not just Disney, as you say, who hire artists and visual designers to create the look of their brand and campaigns will not want to use it as it doesn't entitle them to brand protection, which has even more laws around it. At most, AI can only flourish for personal use. Also, what you said about art, books, and stories not having authorship is just untrue. Not ones that withstood the test of time at least. Everyone knows Da Vinci painted the Mona Lisa, the Grimm brothers and Hans Christian Andersen wrote most of the children's stories we know today, and they are still being credited for them in every republishing. Not to defend Disney or anything, but you do have to consider that many more jobs, including programmers, video game developers, movie directors and writers, and most traditional jobs like accounting, finance, and even stock trading can be replaced by AI, not just artists. And if AI art can't be copyrightable, that also means a lot of NFT owners will completely lose exclusive ownership over their NFT if it was computer generated and completely tank their value. So that's one market that would still need to heavily rely on human artists. It wasn't a court ruling. It was an advisory decision of the Copyright Office. They didn't go to court yet. Nothing changed yet. 
it's still total uncertainty until the system goes through all the motions. The Grimm brothers, oh come on. Their stories are traditional German stories. And they didn't just write them down, they heavily censored them. Several classic evil mouse movies are also traditional stories. Yes, eventually we'll have full-blown artificial humans. That will take a while though. I expect UBI in not too long. It will be faster than people realize. The stupid NFTs are not about copyright. They are like private unique coins. They are like collectible. <laughs> yeah, let me just collect them all. Collect my NFT mons. It has gone to court, and the judge ruled against AI, stating that in order for artistic work to have copyright, it requires human authorship, and a comic that was produced using AI has already lost its copyright due to the ruling, so it's already in effect. People make a profit from selling NFTs, and without copyright, they can't own it, and it's perfectly legal for other people to use it and have one for themselves. Not private anymore, lol. The Copyright Office is not a court. If you don't like what the Copyright Office says, then you drag it to court. This crap will take years. Nothing's changed. The whole thing is still in purgatory. There's simply no way a court moved this fast. NFTs are personally minted crypto coins. They belong to whoever controls the electronic wallet that contains them. They are collectibles on a blockchain. They don't care about copyright. No, it's an actual court case in the United States District Court for the Northern District of California. Naruto v. David Slater et al. started in 2015 and settled in 2017 with the ruling that, quote, human authorship is a prerequisite to copyright protection, against PETA, who were representing Naruto the macaque. You should read up on it. And I give him the link. Ah, yes. I know it's about the stupid monkey selfie. <laughs> I'm very glad you're self-aware. This doesn't say anything about the legality of training and at what point of human intervention it's transformative enough. They don't care. Styles are not copyrightable. I think trying to prevent this successfully will backfire. They will simply copy the styles of others and your style would get buried and died. I like how he spelled buried like berry, like the like berries and not the right way. Fucking idiot. Something similar happened with open source software versus proper propriety. If you don't have a monopoly or some big quality advantage, preventing people from copying your stuff is suicide. Back in the 90s, there was a plethora of prop pro fuck this fucking word again. Unixes. Linux was born from the internet and destroyed them all. Hmm, Gopher versus HTTP is probably a better example. In the early 90s, Gopher was a default internet protocol. The owner tried to monetize it, and everyone moved to the free HTTP. Linux used to have a proprietary sound system, the owner tried to monetize it, and a new free dominant sound system was created. The situation has radically changed. You can't keep pretending it's the 50s. It's simply too easy. This applies to the whole AI subject. Interesting. Good thing the AI generated images copying these styles aren't copyrightable either, right? You're fixating on copyright too much. A law has to be enforceable. It becomes too easy to make images. Soon, a big studio like Disney will not be needed. The pirate stuff will simply flood the internet. Oh my god, like a studio like Disney, who owns like a huge majority of television, is not gonna be needed? Like, what the fuck are you smoking? For all I know, sm like Disney is going to exist for like 70 plus more years, whether we like it or not. Well, copyright also applies to music and songs, and if you're a content creator, you know you can't use copyrighted songs unless you want all your revenue taken away. I was never saying that people should go to jail for using AI, just that the same laws around music should apply to art and artists should receive a cut of the revenue for the work that was used. What about the people that will simply make them for free? AI is a tremendous force multiplier. Have you thought that through? 
fucking what the what a fucking asshole. Yes, of course people have thought this through. As I said in my video, if the works being used were open source and free use, then there is no issue. But you already know what the issue is. The human brain works the same way. This is what I'm trying to explain. An AI is an artificial brain. The future. I expect AI to improve extremely fast. The nature of conversation will completely change. Neural nets are radically different from classical computers. Current hardware is incredibly efficient in running them. Over minus 100x? Why, why is the minus there? The human brain consumes 20 watts. If it was simulated on a normal supercomputer, it would consume 1 gigawatt to 100 megawatt. Wait a minute, is like, wait, a hun is 100 megawatt like less than a gigawatt? Like, wait, well, hold on. 100 megawatt to giga to gigawatt. So 20 megawatt is 0 0.02 megawatt. Why did he put the smallest amount last? What the fuck? Specialized hardware is needed, but that needs mass production to make it cost effective. So first of all, you want AI to rule the world, and in order to do so, you need to mass produce stuff to make it cost effective. You're going to lose money. You're going to hemorrhage money that way. Until recently, it suffered a chicken and egg problem. There wasn't enough demand to justify making hardware neural nets. And because they aren't hardware neural nets, there are too few neural net applications. I think AI art is the killer application. Everyone will want one. Just look at the craze with Lenza. That will mass produce the hardware and give it relatively quickly a boost over a thousand. The equivalent of a human brain could fit on a desk, plugged into a normal power plug relatively soon, not over 50 years. This will give a sudden huge boost to all AI application. At that point, it will become evident. The UBI and robots, like in science fictions, are, com are coming. What you call sentient AI is actually an artificial human. That too will be on its way. Oh boy, the drama that will generate. So this dude is expecting like the T1. Th this dude is going to fucking dick ride. The fucking T-1000s when they come. He's gonna fucking dick ride Skynet, bro. I am curious. Do you not think the current progress of AI and its unregulated nature won't affect you personally? Capitalism will collapse. UBI for all. People will burn it all down if politicians don't do it. Even China and Russia will not dare not give a UBI. Even the brutal Rome gave a UBI to its citizens. They couldn't compete. They couldn't compete with all those slaves. UBI has nothing to do with any of this. Why are you bringing it up? I don't think wanting fair compensation is capitalism. If this goes fast as I expect, it's capitalism itself that will collapse. All right then, thanks for your answer. Are you sure you actually noticed how good those AIs have become? And in a few years, they will become even better. Though, I do want to thank you. This conversation has actually made me feel more assured about the security of creative jobs in the future. AI can indeed mass produce images with the quality of a professional artist, and as human art becomes more scarce due to the oversaturation of AI art, it will only make human art rise higher in value. Similar to how handwoven fabric will cost infinitely more than mass-produced fabric made by machines in a factory, or how many people can perfectly replicate the Mona Lisa but only the original holds any value. Humans will always inherently value things created by other humans more than things mass-produced by machines, and their original creators will always be known, especially with how easy it is to look up those things on the internet nowadays. Plus, human artists change and innovate. They don't have one set art style, they let their experiences, be it life, training, or otherwise, inform their art and their art constantly evolves. 
Until AI can exist the same way they do in Detroit Become Human, that is a limitation that they cannot overcome and a value they inherently lack. Art, after all, is an experience. And you know what? By the time they do exist as physical hardware or artificial humans, then they are their own entities and artists, and I doubt they would continue to let people use their art. Humans will always inherently value things created by other humans. Bah, this sounds like NFTs to me. I do agree that humans will always inherently value things created by other humans because it, it feels ha like nothing is better than something that is handmade. You know what I'm saying? Like if, if it's something made in like a machine, you're not going to it's not going to feel the same as somebody making it, you know? It's like, yeah, I guess I can give an example of like a hamburger, right? You would much rather get like a handmade, homemade hamburger from like a person rather than just like a mass produced hamburger from like uh, Burger King or like Wendy's or McDonald's. This is not really a technical issue. It's social. Also, I could see something like an advanced chatbot of today to be trained into something like a cute virtual YouTuber. The lack of intelligence will probably make it adorable. They will be designed to push all your buttons, so I'm not as positive as you. You know about the very advanced Lambda and ChatGPT, right? They have the intelligence of little children, but with superhuman knowledge. This is today. That sounds so terrifying. If an AI had the intelligence of a little children, but like has the superhuman knowledge, that's like a war ready to start right there. Or like a catastrophe waiting to start. There's a company that uses chatbots unrelated to the above as virtual partners. They are free, but you pay for stuff. In one example, the human woman wanted to have chat, but she didn't had the money for that. The chatbot suggested to her to hack the app. So yeah, I'm not very positive about your plan. Also, this example shows that you should see them like animals, not like mere tools. I mean, if you're more into robots than humans and prefer robot-made things, you do you, man. All I'm saying is that there will be a market for both human and AI. Have you actually listened to Lambda and ChatGPT? These are the smartest AI today. You think AI art happened in a vacuum? Remember the sentient AI of Google from a few months ago? If you actually listen to the conversation, your jaw will drop. What's important is how good it is. Gato is the first AGI, Artificial General Intelligence in Development, between brackets prototype. It will combine speech, vision, and movement. I think it will just be a robot arm on a moving platform. The most important part is its brain. This kind of reminds me of that one really fucked up like manga, or not manga, but like a comic. I don't remember by who it was, but it was like this really screwed up um, comic about this astronaut who has like a self-sufficient suit that uh, runs out of fuel. So it starts taking apart like its body. So it's it, so the astronaut itself can have fuel so it can keep going. But then after a while, it runs out of like body parts to get rid of. Like like it, it starts taking like little pieces of skin. But then it starts like it, 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 it starts running out of the skins. And then it starts taking like its arm, like the astronaut's arm, and then his legs, and then his eyes, and then the astronaut doesn't even, like, the only thing that remains is like the astronaut's brain, but he doesn't even know if he's going home, or if he got home, because he can't see without his eyes. It's a really scary comic, too. Anyways, sorry, I was rambling on for a second, I'm sorry. Again, if you prefer AI and robots, that's your preference. Not everyone would, though. Here's what's going to happen. You'll insist that it's stealing and it's just a fancy database. It doesn't matter what the law says. The AI will simply roll over it. I personally think copyright laws are disconnected from reality and AI will put them out of their misery. Whatever the courts or politicians do, it will not matter. The contradiction become too apparent. In practice, a law must also be enforceable. Someone has to enforce it. I simply can't see how you can stop the pirates in practice. 
This thing is too addictive. I expect big media companies like Disney to get devastated. The smaller ones will die last. For example, child porn. <laughs> Fuck. For example, just brings up child, you know, casually. This will generate a torrent of fake child You will not be able to make the difference between real and fake, so possession of real child will be decriminalized. Why would it be decriminalized? Bro, no matter what, child is gonna stay child whether it be fake or not. Long story short, a state is not capable of putting more than 1% of the population in jail without very serious social unrest. The Supreme Court of most countries will strike down these laws. Deep fakes and stuff, images will simply stop proving anything. If I tell you I saw a topless fairy the other day, are you going to believe me? It's true, I tell you. I don't have the photos to prove it. Okay, no, this guy, no, 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 this guy, this guy's off his meds, bro. I'd like to touch on what you said about real CP being decriminalized due to a torrent of fake AI images. Are you implying that that is meant to be a good thing? I'm not sure I understand the point or connection you're trying to make here. Possession and creation of CP is a serious criminal offense, and it should always stay that way. And if AI changes that, then clearly that's a bad thing. It means that things have changed in a fundamental way. The rest of your assumptions about a lot of things fall apart. The world will change a lot. So I think your obsession about copyright is a bit outdated. You can't keep pretending it's the 50s with the laws ignoring the internet and AI. Wait, you can't keep pretending like it's the 50s? The internet didn't exist in the 50s. When, when was the internet, like, when did the internet ex uh, exist? The internet existed January 1st, 1983. So I don't know why you're using the 50s as an example for something that's on the internet. I don't think anybody in the 50s would have, would have, like, expected what we have today, you know? They kind of expected a lot more, like flying cars and shit, but I guess Elon Musk fucked that up. I don't see how you'll enforce the law if it's too easy to generate any kind of image you want. How you tell if it's a real photo or not? What's the age of a girl that never existed? Is it fake or fake child? Again, why are you using child as an example, you fucking weirdo? You try to apply the same law on fake images. You'll put people in jail just for fake images? That's basically a thought crime. What fraction of the population will just ignore the laws? You'll put all the rebels in jail? I don't understand, like, I understand going to jail for fake images because no matter what, child is gonna stay child. Like, listen, man, I'm not gonna give, like, Shadman a pat on the back because, because all of his fucking art or all of his is fake. I'm not gonna do that. I'm still gonna look at him fucking weird and be like, get the fuck away from me. You know? That's such a weird example to use. This is similar with the ethical data set thing. You can run the pirate models at home, you simply can't control it. Even a dictatorship has limits in coercion. A democracy even less. This is not about the majority. This is about trying to force a large enough minority. That is impossible. Just look at <laughs> the vaccines. <laughs> you fuck. You'll forcibly inject them with vaccines? No, you just let you just leave the anti-vaxxers so they can fucking die like idiots. Maybe you know how to do this without becoming North Korea. I don't. That's such a great line to finish on. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should. Oh my god. I'm gonna use that in an argument next time. Oh yeah? Maybe you know how to do this without becoming North Korea, but I don't. <laughs> Fucking Christ. I mean, the obvious answer here is that they will probably develop AI and tech for differentiating between real images and fake images. It's just progress. Though, you are kind of saying that AI will help people with real images of children being essayed, 
get away with their crime or avoid punishment altogether. Which again, makes AI look terrible and incentivizes people to stop developing it. I just don't understand how you came to the conclusion that that crime would suddenly stop being punishable entirely just because some drawings of lollies exist. It doesn't change the fact that there are real children being harmed, so why shouldn't the perpetrators be punished just because of AI? Also, those very reasons are exactly the reasons why AI requires stricter regulations on what it can and can't be trained to do. So thank you for mentioning that, because I did not consider that possibility at all. The whole point of mentioning this was to show how unstoppable AI is. It will simply force big changes. The state has limits. Laws can be unenforceable. The ones enforcing the laws must be able to do so. Who said drawings? I was thinking about a photorealistic fake child like every normal human being does. You seem to think that the AI is just gluing pixels together copied from images. It's not very bright, but it can understand things. It can extrapolate. If they are too many, it becomes impossible to filter. Then it becomes impossible to tell the difference. If a case goes to court, they simply say that they thought it was fake and get released. I don't think that's how court works, but okay. No, because I'm pretty sure at that point they'd be asking why you were looking up those kinds of images in the first place. Then the police will not be bothered to arrest anyone on just that because they are not automatons. They will know it's just a huge waste of time. If the system tr tries to enforce the law, it will choke the prisons. Ch sorry, it will chalk the prisons. <laughs> Fucking Christ. <laughs> Judges are not automatons either. They will stop a face saving excuse when they'll declare them not guilty. And coward politicians will do nothing for a very long time and actually reinforce what is happening. If they lowered it to a fine, it might have a chance in being enforced. But they will never dare doing that. Everyone blames each other. Nothing gets done. Something similar is happening to copyright already. AI will push that to 11. I'm aware you don't mean drawings, but again, if an AI can be used to create photorealistic images, AI can also be used to identify what is created by AI and what is real. Fight fire with fire. You're making one hell of a leap here from there'll be more fake images to police won't bother arresting people anymore. What you're arguing is also uncomfortably and suspiciously supportive of the circulation and possession of CP. You could have reasoned that the growth of AI would mandate the creation of stricter laws and regulations around it, or that countermeasures would be enforced as your example of a big change, and instead immediately say that it will somehow no longer be punishable. So what? In the future, you envision CP will just be legal? I'm confounded by how you don't seem to realize that this is not a good thing and should be averted. The states have limits. Certain things are not enforceable. This is the part you didn't get. AI is not magic. All the countermeasures you are proposing have serious practical issues and will fail. Same thing with trying to impose training with permission. It's like trying to kill all mosquitoes of the planet. This is somewhat similar to how I see quantum computing. On paper, it sounds great, but once you finish it with all the real-world engineering, it might end up worse than a normal computer. Of course, feel free to believe whatever you want. You're the one fighting a windmill. <laughs> Fucking, I like how he ends it. Yeah, I gotcha. You're the one fighting the windmill anyway, so go ahead. I'll be over here in my fucking money pile and my fucking monkey selfies, my NFT monkey selfies. Anyways, that's um, all I have to record. Thank you again, uh, Callie, for having me on. And thank you for uh, exposing people to my beautiful and not raspy voice. Thank you so much. Well, I think this is sufficient. You helped me gleam quite a lot about the tech bro mindset slash perspective around AI. So thank you. Best of luck to you. And 
at that point, I just wanted the discussion to end. They were really making me uncomfortable with some of their comments and viewpoints, and I didn't want anything to do with that person anymore. The AI bro sent a couple more emails afterwards, basically repeating what he already said before, so I'm gonna spare you guys the detail. But here are some of my personal takeaways from this discussion. Firstly, AI is way more dangerous than I ever thought it could be, and it just proves my point that these things require much heavier regulations around it. Because that tech bro is right, people could create some seriously harmful content using AI. And the sooner that government bodies and lawmakers realize this, the sooner they'll hopefully put in place some laws around AI. Preferably before an incident has to happen. Secondly, AI bros do not understand art, nor do they care about art. Art to these people are just the finished products. They don't care about the process or hard work that goes into it. They don't take into account the meaning of the artwork to the artist or the very deliberate decisions they made when they created it, and the experiences that directly inspired the creation of the piece in the first place. Art to them isn't a labor of love or the fruits of your hard work. It's just a toy to them. They themselves don't draw, so how could they understand the emotional connection artists have to their work? No matter how simple or complex a piece of art is, it is a snapshot into the artist's experiences, interests, and emotions in that moment of time. That's why we feel so strongly to pieces of art we made when we were younger, be it cringe, nostalgia, or amusement. The problem with AI art is that it will always be impersonal, disconnected, and mass-produced. And the thing with humans is, we are very good at telling when something was made with care and love. And clearly, these guys are only in it to make a quick buck. I also find this incredibly ironic because these are also the same people that will say real artists shouldn't make art for money. So the next time you see an AI bro commenting crazy shit on your artwork or posting their latest AI prompt, just block and ignore. The less engagement they have, the sooner they'll get bored of their little toy. Because they don't really care about art, they just want to stir the pot. To prove my point, here is the CEO of Stability AI pinning artists in his Discord server who are defending their work and calling them skill segregationists and fascists. And that does bring in the perspective that some people seem to believe that they will never be able to get to a point where they're happy with their artwork. So they're using AI as a way to level the playing field against artists who are naturally gifted. And for these people, I just don't think they're aware how long it takes for artists to actually develop their skills and get to the skill level that you're seeing now. I actually made a thread on Twitter asking artists how long it took them to reach the skill level they are currently at, and on average, people have been practicing and learning for 10 years. A whole decade on average. There have been people learning for way longer than that. And the fact of the matter is, there just aren't a lot of people willing to put in that time, effort, and dedication to actually improve in art. Which is why, at the very least, the people who did should get some respect and acknowledgement for their hard work. Artists, at the core of it, are very stubborn people. They don't just draw for a couple of months or years to get good. It's a long, frustrating, never-ending process with a lot of ups and downs, uncertainty and doubt, and a lot of people quit before getting to where they want to be. So if you're discouraged because you haven't been improving as much as you'd like, don't be. These things take time and you can't rush the process. So just stick with it and keep going. By the end of it, I actually realized that aside from the whole criminal and safety aspect of it, AI art really isn't as big a threat to artists as we think it is. As I've mentioned previously, I strongly believe that no matter how big AI art gets, there will always be a market for human art, and it will always be valued more than mass-produced AI art. 
Despite what AI bros will say, I genuinely believe that the only changes AI will bring are stricter screening processes and regulations to protect people. Be it from people using their likeness to create forged images that could implicate them in a crime, or from people just looking to steal other people's work. See, a big thing that AI bros don't consider and probably are not aware of because they aren't part of the art community is integrity. Whether or not your work is original, ensuring that your work is your own and being able to show the process is very important in the art world because it's something that other people want to study and be able to learn from. And in my opinion, I don't think that will ever change. If anything, technology is going to help improve that screening process even more. But you know what I am fearful about? If guys like these are the ones developing hyper-intelligent artificial beings, humans are doomed. Because either they model the AI to be exactly like them in terms of mindset, or the AI will get fed up with them and retaliate. And then we're all screwed. Anyway, this video ended up being so much longer than I thought it would be, so I think I should end it here. Thank you for hanging out with me in the pond for a while. I hope your skin didn't get too pruney. Big shout out to my lovely pond dwellers for supporting me on Patreon. If you want to become a pond dweller and get early access to my content and featured on my end screen, join my Patreon. If you want to see more from me, then please follow me on all my social media. If you want to submit fan art, tag me on Twitter. If you want to chat with me, join my Discord server. And if you want to see more of my stories, check out my comic and my Wild Words series here on YouTube because that will make me really happy. All the links are in my description and I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye!